and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kaylee, this is Bennett, and this is Foodie Friday. Before we get into this week's recipe, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload. So this week's recipe was inspired by the upcoming holiday, Mother's Day. So Mother's Day is this Sunday. I'm super duper excited. It is our first Mother's Day together. Last year, this little peanut was inside my belly. So I'm really excited to get our first official Mother's Day in the books this year. So since this is my first Mother's Day, I decided to use that inspiration for this week's recipe. So we're going to be doing a Mother's Day inspired brunch recipe and we're going to be making a crustless quiche. So I'm really excited to share this super simple, fun, delicious, perfect for brunch recipe with you. We're also going to be making some virgin mamosas. So I'm going to be sharing a gut healthy mamosa recipe that you can make for your brunch guests. <coughs> yeah. As always, this week's recipe has been created with healthier ingredients that you can feel good about eating. This recipe is Whole30 approved, paleo friendly, and gluten free and so, so delicious. So without further ado, let's get to cooking. All right, friends, this is such a simple recipe, but for our crust, we're gonna be using two medium to large sweet potatoes. This is crustless, so we're gonna be using that in lieu of a traditional flour crust. Then we also have two cups of baby spinach, as well as four sweet mini peppers. If you don't have any mini peppers on hand, you can always use one half of a bell pepper. Any color bell pepper works for this recipe. It's just whatever you prefer. Then we also have one half medium sweet onion. We're gonna chop up our vegetables later on. Then for our wet ingredients, we're gonna be using 10 large eggs and three fourths cup of unsweetened dairy free milk. We also have one pound of lean ground chicken. I prefer chicken over turkey, but turkey works well with this as well. And then we're gonna be using that to make our breakfast sausage. And then we have our special breakfast sausage seasoning blend, and that will be in the description box below. Then we have our secret ingredient, which is probiotics. I'm using two Just Thrive probiotic capsules to help with digestion. So for our crust, we're going to peel two large sweet potatoes. Normally I like to leave the skin on my sweet potato just because there's lots of nutrients and fiber. But for this recipe, we're gonna peel our sweet potatoes. Make sure you're peeling away from yourself and not towards yourself. So peel these up all the way, get all of that skin off. And I like to save my peel on my sweet potatoes um, and compost it. So that is a great way to save on waste. So normally I'll either save the peel, compost it, or you can always just use it as like scraps for, you know, vegetable stock. So definitely don't throw away any of your leftover vegetable tops, things like that, and store them in a freezer bag. And then you can make some really awesome vegetable stock with that. But once you get all of your sweet potatoes peeled, we will take the ends off of our sweet potatoes, put those in our compost pile or our vegetable stock pile. And then we're going to thinly slice these up into like coin shapes. So that way we can use this to line our baking dish to make our crust. So like I said, we're just going to thinly slice these up. I'll show you exactly how thick to get them. The thinner the better just because this is going to kind of layer up and we want it to make like a nice seamless crust. So try to get them pretty thin if you can. Um, if you don't have a sharp knife then you can always use a mandolin. I wish I had one so that's why I'm using a knife and cutting board here but a mandolin would be great because then you can get really thin even slices. But either way slice up your sweet potato and then we'll move on to the next step. Once all your sweet potatoes are sliced, we're going to grease a 10 and a half inch pie dish with some oil. I'm using olive oil. You can also use safflower oil. Either one works great, but you'll want to grease your pie dish so this crust does not stick. So once you have your pie dish greased, we're going to layer our sweet potatoes up. I would suggest layering this heavy just because when you cook this in the oven, the sweet potatoes will shrink and you don't want any of your egg leaking out on the bottom. So layer this up as thick as you can. It's okay to feel like you're cramming all of the sweet potatoes in there almost like you don't have enough room but like I said the sweet potatoes shrink in the oven so the more the merrier but we'll layer the bottom first and then take whatever remaining sweet potatoes that you have and place them on the outside of your pie dish do this and like I said layer it up really nice even on the sides just because everything will shrink down when we roast this in our oven we are going to roast the crust first um, just because the sweet potatoes take longer than the rest of the ingredients to cook so once you have all your sweet potatoes in your dish we're going to take some more oil we will lightly brush all of our sweet potatoes with the oil and then we will season this lightly with some salt and dried rosemary if you have fresh rosemary that works also um, really well they give off just a really nice flavor so 
take about a half a teaspoon of sea salt and a pinch of dried rosemary if desired and sprinkle the top of your sweet potatoes with this and then we will bake in our oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. While your sweet potato crust is cooking in the oven, we will prepare our onions and peppers as well as our chicken sausage. So take your onion and chop that up however you prefer. I like to do kind of smaller chunks um, in this recipe and we'll do the same with our mini peppers. Just chop those up as well. And then we will saute these along with cooking our sausage before adding everything into the quiche. This allows any water and moisture to release when cooking. That way you don't get a runny center in your quiche. So I would always suggest saute your vegetables and cooking any kind of meats you plan on putting in your quiche ahead of time that way once you add everything to your quiche and add in the eggs all that's left is for the eggs to cook and you don't have a runny center after your vegetables are chopped up, go ahead and prepare your chicken sausage. This is going to taste just like regular breakfast sausage. We're just using chicken, which is a leaner cut of meat. So add in your special seasoning blend. Like I said, the full directions for this recipe, including measurements and the seasoning blend recipe is below in the description box. So be sure to grab that um, from there, but season your chicken, mix it all up with your hand, and then we'll cook this over medium high heat along with our vegetables. Add about two teaspoons of olive oil to your pan over medium high heat and we're going to start to cook our vegetables first. I usually cook these until my onion begins to look a little translucent. So we'll saute these up and then we will add our chicken sausage on top of here and we'll just cook everything until that chicken sausage is cooked all the way through. Once we have all of our vegetables cooked and our chicken sausage cooked, we're gonna just set this aside until our crust has finished cooking and then we'll assemble everything and pop back into our oven to finish cooking. By this time in our recipe, our sweet potato bottom should be pulled out of the oven and we're gonna allow that to cool for about 10 minutes before assembling everything. So now that our peppers and onions are cooked, our chicken sausage is cooked, it is time to assemble our egg mixture. So we're going to take 10 large eggs, add them to a large bowl. We're also going to be using some unsweetened dairy-free milk. I'm using almond milk. You can use whatever dairy-free milk that you prefer, but we're gonna be using 3 fourths cup of dairy-free milk in this recipe. And we're going to add that to our eggs. Um, this will just allow for a very light and fluffy texture um, to our quiche, but then we're also going to be adding a secret ingredient, which is two Just Thrive probiotic capsules. So we're actually going to be opening the capsules up and adding the powder into our egg mixture. This just promotes really good gut health. I love having probiotics in my diet. Um, it's helped with you know any kind of gut issues that I've experienced in the past from my bodybuilding past. I had a really messed up gut there for a while, and these probiotics truly helped fix that. So I take my I just thrive probiotics every single day. They are a godsend. So this helps with my digestion. It also helps keep me from being bloated, but we'll add these into our egg mixture and then we'll be ready to assemble our quiche. Right, friends we're in the home stretch of this recipe so we're going to take our spinach place that on the bottom of our quiche this is key to keep any sort of leakage with our eggs from happening it just also settles really nicely on the bottom so i would always suggest putting your spinach on the bottom and then we'll weigh it down with our sauteed peppers onions and our cooked chicken sausage and then our final step is to pour our egg mixture over the top and we will pop this in our oven at 375 degrees for about 30 minutes or until the center is completely cooked. While our quiche is in the oven cooking, we will go ahead and make some mamosas. So I'm making a virgin mamosa. I'm just using a little bit of orange juice and my favorite sparkling water, Topo Chico. If you guys have not tried Topo Chico, you've got to get on that. It is so good. I discovered this when I was pregnant and we were stationed in Texas and my life has never been the same since. And then we're going to be adding just one probiotic capsule per mamosa and we will stir this up. Be sure to stir lightly just because this will bubble over if you're not careful due to the carbonation and enjoy.
All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this week's recipe video. As always, please give this video a like as well as subscribe to my channel so you never miss an upload. If you're new to the Measure Me Whole community, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below so I can say hi. I look forward to getting together next week where we cook another nutritious and delicious dish. All right, you guys, see you next time. Say bye-bye.